morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. Father, you are welcome in this place. Good morning from Guyana. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome to those of you on Facebook and on YouTube. Please do give me an indication that you are live and well on YouTube and on Facebook as well. Let me see those comments. Hallelujah. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Somebody shout, this is the day of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we welcome you. Father, we welcome you. Hallelujah. 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 Where are you, Facebook? Where are you, YouTube? Where are you, TikTok? Let me see you. Have we started sharing the live broadcast? Somebody, somebody share the live broadcast with at least 10 people. Let's begin to populate heaven. Let's begin to populate heaven and depopulate hell. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. God is going to do something great in your life. There is a word in season for you this morning. The Lord is going to disgrace your enemies. The Lord is going to disgrace any form of fear in your life. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. As you are coming in, I'm asking you to type in the comment section there. Type for me, the plague of fear. Today, we will be dealing with the plague of fear. Hallelujah. God, you are good and greatly to be praised. Father, we exalt your holy name. Hallelujah. Rosoto Kodia Masunda. Father, give us the power to disgrace fear. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Today, we did this is the day that the Lord has made uh, and fear has to flee in the ma- in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. The plague of fear. TikTok is off the mark and it's on fire. Mara official, are you with us this morning? Hallelujah. Somebody tell your neighbor, fear will be disgraced this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, this morning we are going to disgrace fear. Hallelujah. Fear has gripped a lot of people. Fear has made a lot of people not to be functional. Fear has made a lot of people not to be able to take risks. But today we are going to disgrace fear. Amen, somebody. Tell your neighbor, we are going to disgrace fear this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you. You have given us the power to disgrace fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 to 7. Hallelujah. Let me make sure that I get the visuals on um, Facebook and YouTube so that they can see me. Okay, awesome, great stuff. We are all together now. Hallelujah. Somebody type there again, the plague of fear. Let's type it in, in the comment section there. The plague of fear. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 to 7, which is our sort of our anchor scripture, I'm going to lay the foundation where we are going in terms of our message today and in terms of where we are going in terms of our prayers. Hallelujah. And we're going to go through the reasons why we must not fear. We are going to look at understanding the nature of fear. We might not be able to get through everything, but we're going to try and make sure that we get as far as we can. Hallelujah. Then we're going to pray. Hallelujah. If we need to make this a series so that we once and for all deal with an issue of fear because fear is the opposite of faith and we need to make sure that we disgrace fear. Talk to me somebody. So today our objectives are very clear. We want to deal with the nature of fear. We want to deal with the sources of fear secondly and thirdly we want to deal with the effects of fear and we are, we want to understand what is the secret of the victory over fear that we need to apply. Talk to me somebody. When a man lives in fear, it means that he is naked. Hallelujah. When a man lives in fear, it means that he's naked. So we need the power to disgrace that fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear is one of the greatest prisons in which many people are living in today. And we need to make sure that fear does not touch us because he says he has given us a spirit of a sound mind. Hallelujah. He has not given us a spirit of fear. If we are not careful, if we let fear linger on for 
too long in our lives, we begin to understand that fear takes over and it becomes like a plague because then you often hear a lot of people whenever they have to do something, it says, I'm afraid that, I'm afraid they will not say yes, I'm afraid this will not happen, but I'm here to say to you this morning, I rose with the fire and passion in my spirit to tell you that fear will not grip you anymore. Somebody confess it in the comment section and say, I will not fear. I will not fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ child of God, as an introduction, I want you to understand against this background that if if the fear or, or the spirit of fear is inside of you, you are already in a satanic prison. You cannot allow yourself to be in a satanic prison. Tell somebody, I'm breaking free. I am breaking free. I'm breaking out. Whatever type of prison that fear has tried to put me in, I am coming out. I refuse to be in a satanic prison of fear. Talk to me, somebody. So we need to wage a warfare against fear. The war that you need to wage against fear is the one you must fight and you must determine to win. As I told you on this protocol breaking prayer platform, when we fight, we fight to win. And when we win, we win all the way. And we take our blessings and our winnings with our family. We take our household, our nation, our community back with us. Hallelujah. We will not fear. Somebody shout it out with me in the comment section. Mara official, I need you to come on board. I want to know that you are kingdom warriors. I need to know that you are depopulating hell. Talk to me. Say, I will not fear. Make sure that you get somebody on that TikTok platform that says, I will not fear. Somebody needs to break out of the satanic prison. Talk to me, somebody. Shout it out loud. I will not fear. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. I'm fired up this morning. Hallelujah. Today marks the end of the day when I will hear another Christian say that they are afraid. What are you afraid of? There is nothing that you should be afraid of. You cannot be afraid of objects. You cannot be afraid of human beings. You cannot be afraid of spirits because he says he has given you power and dominion over all these things. You can conquer fear. And because you have conquered fear, you would have conquered all things. Hallelujah. And when you have conquered fear, you understand that you are no longer naked for as long as you are confessing and something is coming out of your mouth and you are saying, I fear, that means that you know, you are naked, you are exposed, you are vulnerable and the devil knows that he can come and poke you anyhow and you will fall off the ladder. I declare and I decree, you will not fear. We are going to conquer this plague of fear that is creeping up on the saints of God where they pray and they say they have received their, their answers to their prayers, but the next minute they say, I'm afraid, I'm not sure. What do you say? In I don't know whether it's the same in other countries, but it seems like it's part of, uh, of the speeches when people are saying, I don't know, I'm afraid, I don't know. What are you afraid of? And sometimes we use the word fear so carelessly and loosely when we are now talking about fear. We're like, I, I'm afraid I I don't know where I put in, I put the keys. I'm afraid I don't know where my child is. Why are you afraid where you don't know your child is? Do you understand the 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 the, 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 the casualty within which we deal with the with the word fear? We are talking about fear as if it's it's, it's part of speech, as if it's a, it's a conjunction, as if it's a comma, if it's it's a full stop, as if it's an it's a prefix. I fear I, I'm afraid I don't know where I put my keys. I'm afraid I forgot where I parked the car. I, am I communicating to somebody? Is somebody identifying with this type of speech? We need to stop talking like that. We need to understand that our words carry power. We need to stop using the word fear so loosely. I'm here to declare and decree to somebody, you can conquer fear. Hallelujah. And when you conquer fear, you are in charge. When people greet me, they wonder why I say I'm sitting on the top of the head of the devil and I'm in charge. If you ask me, good morning, Pastor Fortune, I say, good morning. And you say to me, how are you? I say, I am, I am in charge. I'm sitting on the head of the devil. I'm sitting right where, where God left me. My foot is on the head of the devil. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I will not fear. Somebody shout it out loud and say, I will not fear. Oh, Jesus. This morning we rose to disgrace fear. On this protocol breaking prayer platform, we are here to disgrace fear. Father, give us the power to disgrace fear. Release upon us in this morning the power to disgrace fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Child of God, do not allow the fear, the, the fear disgrace you. 
You must determine in your mind and in your spirit, man, that you're going to disgrace fear before it disgraces you. Because if you allow fear to disgrace you, then you are in a prison. Then you are naked. You are vulnerable to attacks. Hallelujah. Even when you are a soldier, soldiers may go to war and then to the battlefield and they know that they need to fight. And they might be afraid because they don't know what the weapons of the other side they're carrying. They don't know whether they're carrying nuclear weapons. They don't know whether they're carrying uh, bazookas or whatever it is that they call them. But they say we are going anyway because we're going to de defend the sovereignty of our nation. You need to defend your borders. You need to defend yourself and say, I will not fear. I will speak up. I will be assertive against anybody who is abusive to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak up because I don't have the spirit of fear. I will not live in fear. I will not allow fear to become a plague in my life. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. You need to understand that fear is exactly the formula and the recipe that the devil uses against the children of God. God did not create you for fear. Come on, somebody. Tell somebody, text somebody and tell them, God did not create me for fear. Hallelujah. In Jeremiah 1, 5, he says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou came forth in your mother's womb, I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. He gave you a mandate to go and prophesy and use your mouth and prophesy to your world that you do not fear and you will not fear. You cannot fear. You are somebody important. You are a king. You are a priest. You are on the throne. You are enthroned. You are crowned. Do you understand that you are more than an overcomer? You you are more than a conqueror and talk to me somebody he said i've already given you the time that you need so walk with your head taller and understand that fear cannot grip you jesus i will not fear hallelujah i am sanctified i'm justified i'm chosen i am called i am saint i have no identity crisis fear has nothing to do with me i am the justified of god and the just shall live by faith the just shall breathe faith the just shall look out for faith the just shall execute faith the just shall emit faith talk to me somebody god bless you nice my god Father, I speak to every single person who is listening to the sound of my voice this morning. Every garment of fear, every shoe, anything that is talking of fear that is coming out from my DNA. My God, my God. I eradicate it in the mighty name of Jesus. Every crown of fear that I did not put on myself. Father, I destroy that crown. In the name of Jesus Christ, that crown catches fire. Whoever put fear in me, that thing is catching fire. Anybody who has been abusive to me emotionally, verbally, and tried to shut me up, Lord, let them catch fire. Karaba, shoto kodiaha. Child of God, you need to understand that fear does not produce any good thing. Fear is the thing that will limit a human being. Fear is that thing that will paralyze your efforts. You will not be able to take a step forward and you will not have the audacity to do anything. Hallelujah. Somebody tell your neighbor, I'm going somewhere. Fear has no grip on me. I am moving forward. Fear has no grip on me. Come on, somebody. Somebody needs to confess in that comment section and say, I will not be limited. I will not be limited. I will not be paralyzed by fear. Talk to me. You guys need to come up, come up, come up, come up, come up quickly. Move with the spirit. Move with the beat of the spirit this morning. I will not live by fear. My efforts shall not be frustrated by fear. I will take every step by fear. Hallelujah. My mind is creative. There is no fear that is hindering me. My fear, there is no fear, there is no fear that will hinder my, my creativity. I will not procrastinate. Oh, you need to understand that when fear comes in, it comes in so that you do not succeed. I need you to determine in your spirit man and in your life today. Say, today I will no longer live by fear. Because if I'm living in fear, that means that I am blocking every gate of success. I am blocking every wave and cloud of success in my life. And that shall not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The way that God loves you, the way that God, God, God honors people who have faith, I have determined in my mind and in my heart, in my body, in my soul, in everything that comes out of me, in every juice that I'm going to drip faith and not fear. I'm dripping the source of faith. Talk to me. 
I am dripping the source of faith. I live by faith. I move by faith. No longer fear. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, those who are giving. Hallelujah. Your faith must be steady, child of God. Your, stay, your, your faith must be steady. And when your faith is steady and when you are persistent in your faith, your faith will produce results. Your faith does not need to go like a ringa ringa rosy as if you are in a, a fun fair. Your faith must be persistent and consistent. And when you say, I have no room for fear, I have no room to deal with fear, talk to me. When your faith is persistent, it begins to give room for a new light to come through. And when new light comes through, you shine. You understand that you move in dimensions of shining and your shining is not a once-off affair. Talk to me, somebody. Somebody tell your neighbor, I live by fear, faith. I live by faith. I move in dimensions of shining. When my light comes, I shine. And I shine. What my shine of yesterday is not the same as my shine of today because my shine is shining brighter. My light has come. And when it comes, I shine brighter and brighter unto the perfection that God has called me for. When I live by faith, I keep on unlocking doors of shining. The keys of shining are released. You must determine in your spirit, man, that I'm going to fight the spirit of fear and I'm going to disgrace fear. Somebody shout to your neighbor and type in that comment section, I will disgrace fear. I will disgrace it. I will disgrace it. I will not be disgraced by fear in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to fight aggressively in prayer. I'm going to fight aggressively in prayer. It will be seen in the physical. They will see it in your walk. They will say, nah, let walk this. This is the walk of faith. I need you this morning as you are going out to work. I need, as you are coming back from work, let your family see you walking the walk of faith and say, fear not. Jesus, do you understand when Jesus said, fear not, my God, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Fear not. When you come in into your household today and your, your, your wife is looking at you, wondering how you're going to pay the bills, you look at your and say, baby, fear not. Those of you who are in academics and you are going into the lecture hall today and you have to write that exam, I want you to look at that exam and you pause for a second. Take 30 seconds, look at that question paper and say, fear not. And then you can start writing. My God, my God, fear not. My God. Some of you need to go walk in into some garages today where you have been envying that vehicle. I don't care whether you've got the, uh, the, the, the salary advice to show, whether you've got a document to say you are employed or not. I want you to just go. And if the salesperson says, do you have money? Can you afford it? What, where do, what are you? You say, Joseph, fear not. You tell them, fear not. I need you to go touch the car you want. Listen, the kind of audacity and the madness, the spiritual madness, if, if you like, if you want to call it madness, is the kind that I will walk into an Aston Martin garage. I don't care whether my affordability says it's a Hyundai. I don't care whether I'm buying a Toyota. Yes, I might be buying a Toyota, whatever it is, but I just want to go touch and just announce to the devil and touch that Aston Martin and say, fear not. I know right now some of you are saying, Pastor Fortune, it doesn't, it, it, it shouldn't make sense. That is the way we confuse the devil even more. It shouldn't make sense. Fear not. When they call you and they say you are owing, say fear not. Did I not say, tell you that I will pay it? I will pay it. Somebody announce it again and say, I will disgrace fear. Fear will not disgrace me in the name of Jesus Christ. When fear knocks on your door, you must stop it. Send faith to stop it. I will not fear. When somebody comes and tells you, I saw your husband walking around with another woman. I saw your husband doing one, two, three. Say, fear not. Why have you decided to make yourself a journalist of bad news in my life? I do not fear. I serve a living God. Thank you for the notification. My God, you didn't pay subscription for bad news. 
You go back on your knees and you kneel and say, God, I did not subscribe for nonsense. I did not subscribe to adultery. I did not subscribe to whatever I'm going through in my life. Therefore, I choose not to fear. My marriage is settled. My vows are certain. My marriage is foundation is founded on the foundations of the living God and it's founded on your word. And therefore, God, you are the one protecting my marriage. Therefore, Lord, I will not tolerate any form of adultery, any third person that is coming to threaten my marriage. Father God, let them catch fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Right now, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. My husband is coming back. My wife is coming back. There will be sanity in this house. There will be no rebellion in this house. Every child of mine is non-rebellious in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I take them out of the captivity of drugs. I take, take them out of the captivity of wrong friends in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I shake loose every form of madness that is in this house. Anything that you did not plant, anything that you did not propose in the family that is praising you and praying to you and worshiping you. Father, I brought it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That is the kind of craziness I need to you will release favor on your house like never before. It, they must wonder, is something wrong right with mom? Is something right with dad? Mm -mm. As you are pacing up and down, some of you need to go circulate your houses. Hey, I am here to disgrace fear this morning. Some of you need to take your anointing oil and march around your house. If they say you are doing witchcraft, do witchcraft on yourself. It's your olive oil after all. Go and disgrace fear. Let the, the witches on your street, who thought they are bewitching you, they will be wondering what are you sprinkling. If you don't have anointing oil, take a bucket of water. Say, as you are going around the house, just be sprinkling water. No fear. You will put fear in the in the witches and wizards because they'll be like, what happened? Did she go somewhere? Is she counteracting? Is, is she is she is she fighting our enchantments? Is she wherever they are gathered, they are gathered to scatter. So I'm just doing it for show, for you people to know that I'm not sleeping. I know you are the one who's trying to torment me. But today I'm here. I arose to torment the tormentor. And that fear, that tormentor of fear is the one I'm doing. Who's with me? Who's with me? I'm here to disgrace fear this morning. I will disgrace fear. Mm. Be bold as a lion. Let them see you. If they like, let them talk. Put your, where's my anointing bottle? Jesus. Put your anointing bottle. Okay, this is my lipstick. You put it there on your workplace. Father, I thank you. This is the start of a new day. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Holy Spirit. I anoint myself with oil. I'm anoint this is a symbol. My God, thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are with me. Let this day be productive in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Full stop. You have disgrace fear. Karaba Shotokodia. If they like, let them go spend millions. If they like, let them go, go to the biggest shrine ever. And as you, as you are, you, you, if... It's just that in the workplace, there are certain things we cannot say. You understand? So we have to contain ourselves. But if it was permissible, I would actually even go around and say, as they continue to go spend money on different altars of evil, on different shines of evil, Father, they will get broke while they are busy. And I'm here in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When you go to the kitchen in your workplace, and you are pouring your tea and your coffee. You come back and say, this coffee is anointed. Father, as I drink this coffee, let it be symbol of your blood. The blood of Jesus washes me. The blood of Jesus protects me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. Mm. Are we tracking together this morning? Do you understand? When fear begins to knock on your door, we send faith out. My God. Romans 8 15 says for you have not received the spirit of fear you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear so that means there was a spirit of fear that was given and I'm going to show you just now where fear started in the Bible beforehand everything was hunky dory fine until they went to attract the spirit of fear that Adam and Eve people our beautiful ancestors 
Fear was nowhere. So when you come to Romans 8, 15, he says, you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. So when he uses the word again, it means it was something that had troubled certain people before. So that means between me and you, we can be troubled by this issue. So we need to constantly deal with it and say, no, you are not going to raise your, 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 your head again. Mm. Keep on declaring it. It is free to declare it. You can say it as many times. I will not fear. I am free from the plague of fear. And then he tells you, he says, but you have received the spirit of adoption where we cry, Abba, Father. You have the received the spirit of adoption into the faith. You have received the spirit of an overcomer. You have received the spirit of a resurrector. You have a received a spirit that raises the dead to life. You have the received the spirit of divine health, divine prosperity. So when a man is full of the Holy Spirit, you understand that fear has no place. Oh, somebody say fear, you have no place in my life. Fear has no place. But when your life is void of the spirit of God, then fear will have place. So make up your mind. If I am to be full of anything, I'm not going to be full of methylated spirit. I'm not going to be full of vodka, but I'm going to be filled with Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit is inside of me, there is no room for any other spirit to enter. There is no spirit of fear. I don't have room for you. Sorry, the, the, the whole place is let out. It's, 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 it's taken. Sorry, fear. I, I, I cannot give you residence in my body. I cannot. There is no room on the committee members. We're already 12. There is no seat for the uh, uh, 13th committee member called fear. I, I cannot accommodate fear in my brain. Sorry, I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. Anybody who's speaking fear into your life, uh, there's no room. The house is fully let. The hotel is fully booked. Sorry. There is no room for fear. Jesus. Fear has no place in my life. Fear is like a chain, child of God. It chains your legs. And when it chains your legs, your hands cannot move. And your head cannot move because your head is stuck. You are trying to think it cannot move. When a man is chained physically, he's, he's like he's, he's in one spot. Tell your neighbor, I refuse to be on one spot. I refuse to be on one spot. I refuse to be stagnant in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Do you understand that fear is the reason why you are stagnant? Fear is an agent of the devil. And when it's an agent of the devil, it, it tries to give the kingdom of darkness information about you because they say, she's fearing now. She's not sure she's going to make it. So this is the time we are taking. Come on, release more demons. She's panicking now. My God, my God. Do you understand that when, uh, when you read, uh, I think there's a book called 48 Laws of Power. When the enemy, you, you can see an entrance opening. That is when you flood in faster. Oh my God. They want to destroy you. That, he, 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 you think that devil, when, 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 when we cast out one demon, he sends more demons. 700. He sends double, triple. Because his plan is, is one. To kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to get to the point where you are destroyed completely, annihilated completely. You will not be annihilated. You will send out the missiles that destroy him completely. I have no room for fear. When, when you understand the operations of fear and, and how the devil uses it, fear opened the door for Satan. And when he comes in, fear brings a legion of demons, hallelujah, to attack a man. He doesn't say you are a human being. I'm a spirit being. No, 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 no. He comes with the whole legion. Satan does not play fair. He doesn't say you are in the lightweight division. He says, I'm a heavyweight division. Whether you are lightweight or heavyweight or you don't know what weight you are, I'm going to come with all the weight around me and over me, under me, on the side of me. I'm going to come and squash you and destroy you. Come out, spirit of fear. When fear is in your life, you need to understand that it opens you, you to an attack of the devil. Father, we close that door. 
Right now, I want you to tell him the door to fear is door of fear. You are closed. The gates have been locked. The key has been thrown away. There is no locksmith in sight that can unlock this gate in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When you understand the dimensions of fear, you understand that fear does not make people meet their helper. Fear makes people miss out on their destiny helpers. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Fear makes people afraid of asking help from their destiny helpers. And when you can see that the person that needs to unlock my destiny is this person, but you can't find the words, you are too scared to talk because you are scared of rejection. From today, you will never be scared of rejection in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. There are many times God has placed your helper before you, but fear has blindfolded your eyes from seeing them. So the power to confront that fear is faith. So I want you to raise this prayer point with me this morning and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, wipe away any form of fear in my eyes so that I'll be able to locate my destiny helper. I will not miss my destiny helper. I refuse to be blinded by fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, shout a resounding amen, somebody. For you to disgrace fear, child of God, you must be ready. You must be ready. Tell your neighbor, you must be ready. Talk to me. Let's move this. Let's pick up this pace. You must be ready. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You must be ready. You must have the weapon to tackle it. You must have the weapon to tackle it. Oh, Rabba Shikata Basata. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Give me one second. Let me make sure we don't get offline. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. No, 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 no. Rakadia basoto kodia basata. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say it again. I will not be blinded. I will not be blinded. Are we still together, Facebook? Are we still together, YouTube? Let me see the people on Facebook. Facebook, I declare you will not fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Are you declaring it? Are you talking to me? Are you talking to the Holy Spirit? You will not be blinded in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will see. You will see. Hallelujah. You must have the, the weapons to tackle fear. You must be determined to conquer fear. You must wake up and sleep with the determination I'm going to conquer fear. When you sleep with the determination of conquering fear, that means we have no room for nightmares that bring fear into our spirit, man. Any dream that comes into your life that, that it, while you are sleeping and it tries to scare you, you wake up and say, listen, I told you, the rooms are not for let. We are not renting out any fear rooms here. So get out. You experience a spirit husband or a spirit wife trying to come in. You say, I have no room for this nonsense. I do not have room for fear. I don't have room for scattering my life. My God. Jesus. In the Bible, fear, if, if you look at the words, two words. Fear not. 365 times in the Bible. That means for every single day of the year, you wake up with the fear not. You wake up with a fear not word. Fear not, fear not, fear not. Somebody shout, shout it out loud there. Fear not. Write it out. Fear not. Let's see whether you can write it 365 times. Oh, Jesus. For every day of the year, God is saying to you, fear not. Come on, say it to yourself. Fear not. You didn't come here by mistake. Make use of this time. If it is your first time seeing me, I'm here because God sent me to you. This is a destiny meeting. You will never forget this day. Fear not, my God. God is saying fear not 365 days a year, every single day of your life. All you must do is have the right word to use against fear. 
You must be empowered with fire that is burning inside of you. The fire must be fireized. Fireize your altar this morning. Fear not. Understand that fear is something that is dangerous. It robs people of their destiny and glory. Fear is an armed robber in essence. Therefore, you must be determined to fight it and say, I will not fear. Fear not. I don't allow any armed robbers. There is no hijacking of my destiny here. I will not fear. Oh, no one can cover your nakedness except Jesus. Fear makes a man run naked because fear is like an armed robber that chases a man out of his house without even being dressed. It chases you around and you're naked. Jesus, it stops today and it stops now. Witches and wizards use fear as the major weapon of attack. Hallelujah. The same way when an armed robber comes and, shoot and, and points a gun at you, he's using fear because he knows that when you see a gun, you will want to run away, but you're going to use your faith. The devil has been pointing the gun at you for too long. My God. You have to use your faith to stop them. Because the heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord. The heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord. Your heart is in the hand of the Lord. And when the hand of the Lord is involved, you know what happens, right? The mighty hand of the Lord, when it comes, it smites. When it comes, it, it destroys. It annihilates all the enemies in sight. Oh, Jesus. You can't enjoy anything when you have been robbed because it's like you have worked for days and years and, and months and, 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 and gazillion and decades and now suddenly fear wants to come and rob you of that. You live in fear. You have achieved so much, but you're afraid you're going to die. Mm -mm. Whatever diagnosis they've given you, decide in your mind and your spirit and, and your heart and say, I will not fear. This thing shall not have grip over me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now you are, you are living your life in fear and, and you can't even enjoy your family. God bless you. God bless you, Tiffany. I will not fear. Hallelujah. I will not fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. When your health, when your finances... God bless all those of you who are giving. When your health and your finances and your joy has been robbed in the spirit realm, you can't enjoy them in the physical because you are tormented by fear. You don't have joy in the spirit realm. You are crying the whole time. You need to face whatever it is. What I, whatever it is, it has a name. But I'm carrying a name that is called faith. And that faith destroys anything that threatens my joy, anything that is destroyed that threatens my health. And as the, the more I'm becoming joyful, the Lord rejuvenates my cells inside my body. I begin to, to have faith. I begin to have faith. I begin to progress. Come on, somebody. I'm going to enjoy my faith and my productivity in the physical. I'm going to enjoy the finances that I work for in the physical in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to be joyful every single day of my life in the name of Jesus Christ. The devil will not see my tears. I may cry for a moment. Weeping may last for a moment in my bedroom, but joy comes in the morning. One thing is for sure. When I exit my bedroom, you will see joy in my face. I will not allow you the audacity to see me cry. Hallelujah. You may try to bring me down even in the workplace, but you will not see my tears. You will see my boldness. You will see that I have faith. I don't have time to be intimidated. There is no room that I'm letting out. There is no Airbnb here that is called fear. There is no hotel called fear. Fear has packed up and gone. In the name of Jesus Christ, fear is a tormentor. Therefore, Lord, I rise this morning to declare that I decree and I ask for your help and I ask for the heaven's armies' help. I ask for the armies of the Lord to come and rally with me to torment my tormentors. And Father, this morning I rose to torment fear in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, when fear is upon you, child of God, it torments you. Fear has sent some people to their early graves. I want you to say to your, to your neighbor, I will not go to an early grave. I am not going to the grave. I will not be sent to an early grave. Fear can bring you down and bring all you have achieved down. 
When fear begins to torment a man, he cannot get out and, and, and go where he's supposed to be. So you must fight it. And you say, Lord, I'm going to where I'm meant to be. I am going to reach my destiny. My plans are going to come to pass. I am going where I'm supposed to be. Somebody tell your neighbor, in case your neighbor is too lazy, tell yourself, I'm going somewhere to happen. I am somebody. I've got the greatness DNA inside of me. I don't have fear inside of me. I'm going somewhere to happen. In fact, leave your neighbor because your neighbors have delayed us too long. We have been slap our, slapping our neighbor too long in churches. Right now, this morning, we are slapping ourselves. Slap yourself on your shoulders and say, you are going somewhere to happen. Fear is not your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The greatness DNA lives inside of me. I am uh, my own personal motivator and my inspirator. Oh, child of God, understand how fear operates. When fear is in your life, it gives him room to torment you and we cannot give him room. We don't let out rooms. We don't have enough rooms. There's not even, there's not even, it's not an issue of enough. We do not, there is no guest called fear here. We will not be broken down by fear. You are a carrier of the Holy Ghost. You drive out fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I see the chains of fear breaking in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I said, I see the chains of fear breaking in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. You need to understand, child of God, this enemy that you're fighting calls fear. It tries to destroy your excitement. It tries to establish anxiety. I want you to pray against anxiety this morning and tell anxiety to flee. I will be excited. I will be joyful. Anxiety, you must flee. Pack your loads and go. Understand that I'm not here to sponsor you, fear. Oh, Kariya Basoto Kodia. You need to sponsor your joy. Sponsor your joy. And when you continue to sponsor your joy, you sponsor your strength. And your strength begins to increase more and more and more. You must refuse to fear because fear kills your joy. And my joy will not be killed. Come on, that is a prayer point. I've already given it to you. I'm expecting to see it on that comment section and say, My joy will not be killed. My joy will not be killed. Thank you, Jesus. My joy will not be killed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My joy will not be killed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. The Spirit of the Living God cannot be where fear is. When the Spirit of the Living God comes in, the fear has to flee in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We don't have, we cannot accommodate fear. We live in the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is inside of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Refuse to fear. Uh, to fear. Refuse for your joy to be killed. Refuse for your joy to be absent in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh my God. The Lord's presence is in this place. The Lord's presence is in that place where you are right now. And when the, spirit, the presence of the Lord is with you, fear has to be absent in the name of Jesus Christ. Unless the Lord is not with you. My God, my joy will not be killed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I have preserved, I have preserved fear, faith in me. Lord, your presence is here. Your presence is here. Therefore, I cannot lose faith in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Understand this equation, child of God. The, 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 the presence of fear equals the absence of joy. And the absence of joy means that there is fear in there. And when there's an absence of joy, and when there's an absence of God, then you understand that you are now having an abundance of defeat and that cannot be so. It cannot be your life. You must tell yourself, I live in the abundance of faith. I live in the abundance of more. I live in the abundance of more than enough. I live in the abundance of joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Fear is a magnet for the devil, and I don't want any magnets. There is no fridges here with magnets. I don't have the magnetic field. There's no magnet for the devil here. I refuse to be a magnet of the devil. I refuse to be a magnet of fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Never forget this in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
Anywhere where God goes, uh, there is faith, and that is exactly where I'm going. Anywhere God is, uh, that is exactly where I'm going. God lives in the praises and worship of his people. Therefore, every single day of my life, uh, I will praise God and I will worship him. God lives here. You need to tell yourself, God lives here because from my mouth uh, proceeds praise and worship every single day. Hallelujah. This morning, I woke up with a new benefit that says, fear not. My God, show me the things, say the things that you need to show me so that I know that I do not need to fear in the name of Jesus Christ. You need to understand this formula. Whenever God wants to do something positive in your life, he will show you things and say things to you that will make you believe him. Equally, likewise, when the devil wants to do something negative in your life, he will also show you negative things to you. He will inject fear inside of you. And once fear is found, you can carry out his evil. So you must not allow the devil to make you carry out his evil by showing you negativity. Somebody needs to determine and declare in that comment section and say, I will no longer be negative in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now you say to me, Pastor Fortune, sometimes it's so difficult. I catch myself being negative. I catch myself having said something negative, but it is the purpose and the motive that I want you to feel in your heart and say, Father, anoint my lips, anoint my tongue this morning, this evening, wherever I'm going. Father God, let me not speak the words of negativity. These are things that you're going to have to say to yourself and psych yourself every single morning, every single night and consciously say, I will not be negative if you're going to have a discussion even with your spouse, you need to go and make sure that you pray about it before even if you're upset about something and say Lord help me not to say negative things that will break instead of building hallelujah I need this to be sorted out in my life father give me the words to speak to my children in a way that they will understand that I will not make them rebellions in the name of Jesus Christ father teach my mouth to be articulate and assertive in a positive way in the mighty name of Jesus Christ help me not to put fear in, the, in my children not to be able to approach me and tell me when they are going through difficulties uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Are we tracking together? Somebody talk to me. Talk to me. You need to, it's a conscious thing. Some of you, you need to understand that we were not born, born again. Do you understand that we were also in the world, that we also struggled with road rage. And some of us still need to remind ourselves when we are driving on the road, not to say certain words, not to say certain curses. Hallelujah. We have to be consciously and say, Lord, help me as I drive. I may be experiencing some drivers where I'm wondering whether their medulla bronchitis is really in the right place. But Father, help me. I rest my lips and I rest my mouth so that I don't say things that will backfire on me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I won't be negative in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I refuse to be negative in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is my counsel to you this morning. Oh, the devil shall not believe. We will not believe the liar. That liar, the devil, we will not believe you. So when you tell us negative things, we refuse it immediately. When you hear something negative, refuse it immediately. Listen to me, child of God. There is only so much of news that you can listen to. Some people will open their TV channels and they're watching the news in the morning, the news at night, the news in the day. Every single day you are hearing the same thing. The news broadcast has not changed. It's still the same. And you are seeing so much negativity in the world. And you are now starting to think nothing good will ever come out of wherever you are. But it is a liar. Or it's a liar from the devil's pit of hell. My God. We live in a, in a world that is ruled by fear. How am I doing for time? Okay, we've got 11 minutes to go. Today, I am going to stick to my time in Jesus' mighty name. Father, help me to be truthful in this, in Jesus' name. Oh my God. Make sure you are following the broadcast that you are, you are watching me from and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss me. I'm on every day, 5 a.m. South African Standard Time. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In this world that is dominated by fear, with activities from the devil's side, with activities from the satanic agents, hallelujah. The devil is an architect of fear, and so he, at, at every angle he wants us to fear. You need to understand, as I told you, that there was nothing called fear before in the world, hallelujah. Until you get to Genesis chapter 3 verse 10, he says, Then the Lord called Abraham and said to him, Where are you? So he said, Listen, look, look, look at Adam, how he messed us up. Adam messes us up. The Lord says, Where are you? He's asking for a location. And this is what Adam answers. He says, I heard the voice in the garden and I was afraid. Do you understand that fear brings confusion? You don't even know what you are saying anymore. 
They are asking, where are you? It's a matter of location. It's not about how you are feeling. But because they, he had opened up the room for the devil, he was now saying, I, I heard the voice and I was afraid. And therefore I was scared, scared to step up. And that's exactly how some people are. They hear the voice of the devil. They are afraid to step out. They heard the voice of their friends who discouraged them. They are afraid to step out. They heard the voice of other people who have failed in marriage. God bless you, Donna. They heard the fear from other people who failed in marriage. Who said you're going to fail? Who said your own will not work? Who said you cannot try again? Who said you cannot love again? Whose voice are you listening to? Who said? Who said it? What if you do, do win? Who told you that you will not win? Why are you afraid that the project will not be a success? Trust yourself. Trust your mind. Trust your brain. Trust what God has put inside of you. Trust the creativity that has been put inside of you. My God. He says, I was naked. God bless you. He says, I was naked and I hid myself. May that not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ where you are hiding yourself because, be, be, because you, you are afraid. Because that's exactly what the devil wants. He wants you to be afraid. He wants you to be sitting in your cocoon. He wants you to be locked up in your room. He wants you to be depressed. He doesn't want you to take any risk. He doesn't want you to venture out in business. He doesn't want you to become somebody. He doesn't want you to discover your next level. He doesn't want to discover that the fact that you, you are a, a, a groundbreaker. He doesn't want you to discover that you are a president setter. That you are the next biggest thing. Hallelujah. That's going to break forth. You're going to come back with your inventions. You're going to introduce something big in the world. You're going to win souls for Christ. Your ministry is going to expand. He doesn't want to want you to know that you are the next big evangelist that is going to win souls to Christ. Come on, somebody. He doesn't want you to know that you are the one to raise your siblings and to, to change the destiny of your family members. My God. He says, I was naked and I hid myself. Who told you you were naked? Who told you you were naked? Who told you you are not equipped? So that was the first manifestation of the satanic presence and activity in the earth, the manifestation of fear in the Garden of Eden. So that's exactly where the devil started attacking. So as God works with faith, Satan works with fear. Faith is associated with whatever God will work in your life, but fear is associated with the workings of the devil. So you now understand, when you now understand what is this enemy and this devil that you are fighting, the fear, it brings an unpleasant emotion. So anytime you are seeing an unpleasant emotion that causes you to have threat and that causes you to feel danger, pain or harm, you understand that you are working with an unwanted uh, a resident, an unwanted tenant. Fear is an unwanted tenant. You will not walk in pain and harm. Anytime, every time, you are, you are always being exerted with pain. Anybody exerting with pain? That is an unwelcome tenant. That is my cue every time. If somebody says, I am being abused, I feel like I'm being abused, I'm asking you, do you feel pain more than joy? There's an unwelcome tenant there. Talk to me. You need to understand that when fear comes into your life, the anxiety begins to well up and it begins to grow. That means something is out of sync. Hallelujah. You are, you, you, are, you are concerned about the outcome of something of, 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 or, or you, are, you are concerned about the safety of someone or yourself. There is fear. Deal with that thing. Kill that thing right there. Fear is that likelihood or something unwelcome is going to happen. You are driving. You are, some people are scared to drive. They've got driver's licenses. They don't want to enter their cars because they are fearing to drive. My God, my God, help me, Jesus. So that negative emotion that is generated from those negative expectations, hallelujah, or whatever negative anticipation you have, hallelujah. What is that negative anticipation that you're having? Why must you anticipate the negativity? Why must you think that you are the one who's going to go into an accident just because you saw an accident when somebody was driving to Cape Town or driving to, to Zambia? Or, why must it be you? Stop having negative expectations. Talk to me, somebody. So you begin to understand that fear is, is, is faith in reverse. Fear is, is faith in reverse. Faith is then, in, in that dis disastrous and, 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 and calamity, is what you need to implement. 
You need to implement your faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear is expecting the wickedness of the devil to prevail over the goodness of the Lord. And surely there must be something wrong with that equation because surely the evil of the devil cannot overcome the goodness of the Lord. My God is good. My God is alive. Hallelujah. Talk to me, somebody. Fear is expecting what is wicked to overcome what is good and it cannot be. Hallelujah. Fear is exercising more confidence in the wickedness ability and in the, in, in the ability of Satan over the goodness and the ability of God. And surely that cannot be. Somebody type in that comment section, I will not fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You need to understand that fear is when you take the evidence and, 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 and you place the evidence of the senses above the evidence of the word. You cannot go about with how you feel, how it looks. It, you don't care about the senses. What needs to prevail is the word of God above that thing. Talk to me, somebody. A lot of people have got the fear of death. How are we doing for time? Four minutes and I'm out of here. And then we pray. Thank you, Jesus. The fear of death, the fear of dying before time. In as much as the children had partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shed in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death all their lifetime subject to bondage. Hallelujah. So you begin to understand that those who fear death are subject to a lifetime of bondage and you need to release yourself. This is Hebrews chapter 2, which is telling you prophetically that he has overcome this thing and you need to get rid of it. Hallelujah. The next kind of fear that you will need to deal with is the fear of the future. The fear of the future. A lot of people are uncertain about what the future holds. Leave it to God. Somebody tell, tell, tell your neighbor, fear not. People are fearing about the future and about what the future holds. The other kind of fear, the fear of the unknown. People are fearing the unknown. People are fearing the fear of failure. Why do you want to fear failure? Why? If, if others did it, why can't you do it? And why can't you did it? And you can did it and you do it as well. Stop fearing failure. You go. Anybody who tries to discourage you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Somebody said, I will not fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I will not fear. I will not fear. Somebody said, I will not fear. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm trying to catch up with all these comments. Hallelujah. I will not fear. Fear is not my portion. If somebody wants to discourage you in doing something that they have done, because they failed, it does not equate the fact that you are also going to fail. Talk to me, somebody. Then the fear of negative predictions, because you received an ugly uh, warning, uh, a, a prophecy. Uh, my take is that if, if, if I'm going to prophesy something and I see doom looming, I need to know what is the strategy out of this. God, okay, if I'm to deliver a, a, a warning, what is the way out? Hallelujah. Thank you for the warning. Thank you for the pre-warning. But what is the strategy out? Because I cannot live with the word that instills fear inside of me because God is a God of peace. So when I receive a, a negative prophecy, I want to know, God, you have provided a way of, of escape. There must be a way of escape that has been provided for me. Talk to me, somebody. Hallelujah. Why should I fear not doing well? That is not my expectation. My expectation is that I will end well. My expectation is that I will do good. I will not fear negative predictions. I will not fear negative wishes. If somebody wants to wish you negatively, you need to, to, to eradicate that immediately. Hallelujah, somebody. It will not come to pass. Negativity will not come to pass. Talk to me, somebody. Oh, yes, eulogia. Oh, yes. You need, to, you need to cancel that. Too many people are walking around with prophecies of fear. Prophecies that have instilled fear. Yes, the fear... The fact that the warning came is because God loves you that much to shake you off and say, if you don't do this, do this and you will live. If you don't stop doing this mess, this is where you're going. So when I bring you a prophetic word that is scary, I'm going to give you the alternative because he's a loving God. You see something, you don't have the guts and you dreamt bad about somebody. Wake up and pray against that thing. Warn the person, ask God to give you the words to articulate it in such a way that you don't cause the person to have a heart attack. 
that they must not collapse when you bring that word of, of, of warning. Hallelujah. People are sitting with the fear of the past, ruining them. Hallelujah. Can somebody please come and plug in uh, the, the, this, this speaker quickly? In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The fear of, of the past ruining your future because you are looking at your past. You are looking at your past mistakes. You are looking at your past sins. But Jesus says, listen, I have, you have overcome. The day you decided that you are a new man in Christ, that you have overcome. That the, the, the day you decided that I must come and live inside your heart and be the Lord over your life, I wiped away the slate clean. Stop, of, stop being stuck in the, in the past because the past will ruin your future. There will be people, there are angels of the devil that will always be creeping up and trying to remind you that you were messing around when you were, before you were born again, that you were fornicating left, right and center, that you were a crook before you used to crook people in business. You were used to do everything sing under the sun that would have just every sin in and unimaginable. Imagine if Paul had decided to be stuck on whatever he was doing in the past. He would have not been effective in God using him and into, into freeing so many souls. He was a murderer. He was a persecutor of the Christians, but he still rose above that. I'm here to tell you this morning, you can rise above the things that you were doing in the past. Don't let your past ruin your future. Don't let your past mistakes ruin your future. Don't let your past divorce ruin your future. Don't let your past rejection ruin your future. Don't let your past mistakes the fact that you failed that module ruin your future. Maybe it is just an issue of re readjusting or re-strategizing what is the next course or education stream that you need to go to. Don't let the failed business ruin your future business. Hallelujah. Maybe you just need to readjust, re-strategize, reposition, and relocate. Whether you are relocating mentally or you are relocating physically, whether you are relocating continents, do what it takes. Fear must not grip you. Talk to me, somebody. Fear must not grip you. Don't fear. Don't fear when they tell you how much the ticket costs. Many have made it. Go for it. If you want to relocate to South Africa, come to South Africa. We welcome you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I don't care who you meet at the border. Tell them Pastor Fortune says she's welcoming me in Jesus' name. My God. The fear of history ruining your destiny. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13, he says, He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. Listen to the power of the scripture. It says, He who covers his sins will not prosper, but he who, co who confesses his sins shall be and, and forsakes them will have mercy. So God is saying, if you forsake your sins and you confess them, you will obtain mercy. That means that you... When mercy has come, that means also grace comes and favor comes. Let me tell you the secret. Oh, Jesus, my God. Are you really going to make me tell my business on this TikTok? Let me tell you. Let me tell you this. This I always tell when I'm in my women's meetings. My God, my husband, help you give me favor for this one. When I was growing up, I used to be approached by a lot of married men. Until the point I sat down and I said, God... Is there something that says here, I'm a candidate for married men? I decided to put a stop to it. And I said, I will not be approached by a married man. Hallelujah. Talk to me. Some of you, you need to understand, identify things that you have been attracting. There's a reason. There's, they, I said, there must be something in me. What made you, what gave you the audacity being a married man, thinking that I've got room to accommodate you. You cannot be a tenant here. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, and, 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 and I'm, I'm sharing this example and I don't want to dwell on this part because we can discuss it much later, even in the evening on our talk session at seven. When you realize that there's a certain thing that you've done in the past, make a mockery of it, make a joke of it, so that anybody who tries to come and say, I'm going to tell your business, you make sure that I've already told my business. There was a time and a season as a preacher of the word, I did not want to tell my business. But if you come into my women's meetings, I will tell you, I've got women who I collaborate that we will tell our business so that another woman does not have to go through the same mistake. You don't have to fall into the same trap because the devil wants, because he knows the sin you did in the past, he wants to make sure that he uses that sin against you. Are, 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 we, are we getting it? Hallelujah. Karabashata kariyaha. He wants to use that sin to block you from talking. 
and he will want to flesh that sin in front of you that he says you are no woman of God you are no man of God you've got no right to say this thing because you know what you did last summer uh-uh carry up a shot of code yeah Hezron Hezron I I conquered it there was a mixture but then I had determined in my spirit man that I need to stop this nonsense I don't know why 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 wouldn't why wouldn't a married man be happy in their marriage why must you come to me I'm I'm not a dumping ground because when in effect Hezron what was basically happening is this When you are approached by a married man, if you are a woman, if you are a single woman and you take a married man on, that means you are saying I don't have options. You are saying that I'm not noticeable. You are saying I don't trust God to bring me that person that is for me. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm saying it as a correction to anybody. If you are a single woman, do not allow yourself to get second best because God has got the best for you. It's better to wait. I know some people will say they are burning and they don't want to fornicate and they don't want to sin against God but it's better to wait than be to be stringed along by a married man who's just going to take your phone calls whenever they want who's going to just show up whenever they want and you are sitting there on the sideline and like you're being benched and you are not even lying on mercy you don't understand that you are being benched until you are no 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 yes mom sophie god bless you because what what you are in essence saying that you are going to be benched until there is time for you to be taken out and what what you're saying basically when you are dating a person who's married or when you are committing adultery you are saying i only come out in public they don't even take you out in public what am i talking about you are saying i'm only a candidate for hotel rooms i'm only a candidate to to be hidden i'm only a candidate to take calls um uh, Uh, it, it, during the day but after eight o'clock he's not going to take my call you can't even say to the person you, you are feeling love for them so don't restrict yourself don't restrict your god so you don't even mess with that mess you leave that mess alone you don't touch a married man you don't touch a married woman mind your own business and wait on god hallelujah makadia basoto kodia ha my god hallelujah Let me continue and finalize this thing. My God, I'm I'm fast spent for time. So when you confess your sins before they they bring it up, a lot of pastors they have scandals too. But because they didn't you see vulnerability, we I think it was just a few friends of ours who said, if we do not become vulnerable and you don't open yourself to become vulnerable, you can't teach very well because people think that you have not gone through certain things. They don't understand that I've gone the same struggle. So when I was single, I did not understand when people were talking to me and and I was being taught to say oh my god let me not go there I think I will reserve let's talk about singleness and 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 marriage later in the evening so but when you are vulnerable you're saying I'm a preacher like Elijah with like passions but these are the struggles that I've gone through and this is how I conquered them it's better that I give you the formula and show you that I'm not talking out of theory Do you understand? Because I need you I need you to come out of that mess. Cuz when you cover it, then the devil comes and wants to accuse you. But when he comes and accuses you, then I tell you, you're too late. God has already wiped the slate. God has already healed me of that. God has already taken me out of that mess. Are we communicating? Hallelujah. You are out. You are out. I need you to understand that when he says the blood of Jesus washes away the sins, it means everything has been blotted out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh my God. I'm going to end soon and then I will carry on this message tomorrow. My God. You need to conquer the fear of ending in shame. Ending in shame. Do not fear for you will not be ashamed. Isaiah 54 verse 4. The Lord says, "Do not fear for you will not end up in shame. Neither will you be disgraced for you will not be put to shame for you will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the reproach your widowhood anymore. You will not be somebody was speaking about being a widow. Let me write just write on this scripture. Isaiah 54 verse 4. Do not fear you will not be ashamed neither be disgraced for you will not be put to shame for you will forget the shame of your youth and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore frida frida are you here the lady called frida 
you will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not remember the shame of your widowhood anymore, the reproach of your widowhood anymore. Some people are afraid of the night. Jesus. They're afraid of the darkness. They're afraid of being alone. My God. Makora bashoto kodiaha. The Bible says in Psalms 91, you will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that fi flies by day. Solomon says, uh, they all hold swords, uh, being the expert in war. Every man has his sword on his, on his thigh because of fear in the night. Don't be afraid of the night seasons. Don't be afraid of what you're going through currently in the in mighty name of Jesus Christ. Some people are afraid uh, of some, some specific things physical things. You're afraid of heights. You're afraid of cats. Why are you afraid of a cat? You see a cat, they say, oh, a curse is going to come. There's a cat that crossed the road in front of me. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop here because I want us to pray together and we will continue. The God will give me grace to continue this message. Hallelujah. Don't miss tonight because I think the Lord has cued me in. Let's talk about how to choose a spouse later at 7 p.m. Hallelujah. My God, come on, somebody declare it in that comment section. I will not fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I will not fear. Father, break the chains of fear in my life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody, somebody say it in that comment section. Come on, declare it with me. I break the chains of fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I command fear to break in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. I command the spirit of fear to flee. I command the spirit of fear to flee. I command the spirit of fear to flee in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every plague of fear is destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. My father, my father, everybody who's at the sound of my voice right now, who under the influence of my voice in the mighty name of Jesus Christ father they are receiving the power to confront every form of fear in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I want you to declare it with me and say that I ref I refuse fear I refuse fear in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ I will confront fear I will confront fear. Fear will not defeat me in the name of Jesus Christ I will defeat fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ God bless you I will defeat fear. Oh, Jesus. Let the power to confront fear come upon you right now. Let the power to confront and defeat fear come upon you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Abba, Father, hear my cry this morning. Oh, Abba, Father, hear my cry this morning. Jesus, in any area I have found myself uh, in the prison of fear, bring me out by fire. Let that be your prayer and your declaration this morning. In any prison of fear that I have found myself, uh, Father God, bring me out by fire. Bring me out by fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Bring me out by fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Rokoshikonia masoto kodia Bring me out by fire in any prison of fear. Bring me out, my God. I recover every good thing that fear has robbed me of in the name of Jesus Christ. And the saints are resounding the same declaration right now. I recover all. I recover everything that fear has robbed me. That is your prayer right now. I recover everything that fear has robbed me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My God, come on, I want to see you confront that fear and say, I recover everything that fear has robbed me in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, ask him and say, Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit that will drive out fear. I cannot accommodate the spirit of fear. Therefore, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I overcome. I'm an overcomer. I overcome the torment of fear. My God. Come on, declare it and resonate with me and say it. I overcome the torment of fear. I will not be tormented by fear in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare and I decree, I am not afraid. I declare and I decree, I am not fearful. 
I declare and I decree, I walk in faith. I declare and I decree, I walk in victory in the name of Jesus. I declare it and I decree it and I prophesy it into my life and I prophesy it into the lives of my children and my family and my extended family. Father, I uproot every form of fear, every root of fear, every foundation of fear. Father, I plant faith, I plant victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare that faith has root in my life, victory has root in my life. Fear has eradicated in my life in Jesus' mighty name. My God, my God, I walk in victory. I walk in victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, in any way that I have become naked because of fear, Lord, cover me. Lord, cover me. Come and ask him to cover every form of nakedness that you have been in. Father, wherever the devil has tried to hide me and the devil has tried not to make me step out in faith, the, the, the devil has tried to keep me in procrastination, the devil has tried to keep me in that prison cell, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I'm coming out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm coming out because I'm covered with the garment of faith in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm coming out of the garment of fear. I'm covered in the garment of faith. I'm coming out of the garment of darkness of reproach of reproach and I'm coming out in the garment of grace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I'm stepping out in the garment of joy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I'm coming out in the garment of praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ oh Holy Spirit I hear you and I hear you very well Father God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ our spirits are open and we are fired up my God this altar is burning of the fire of grace and favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we step out in favor and we step out in faith in the name of Jesus my God, I'm coming up. My co I'm coming out. My nakedness is covered up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My God, I declare and I declare that in, in, in all times I will be favored in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. Father, I receive strength. I receive strength. I receive strength right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I receive the strength from the Holy Ghost right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every seed of fear, every seed of fear that has been growing inside of you, every seed of fear that has been growing inside of you every month, every day, every week, right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is being uprooted in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I uproot every seed of fear that has been growing inside of you in the name of Jesus Christ. In whatever area that you have been disgraced, I uproot right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Disgrace, you are uprooted. Any form of fear that has was sent to disgrace you right now, it is being uprooted in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, as God disgraced Pharaoh in the Red Sea, Lord, I decree and I declare that you are alive. Every giant of fear is being disgraced right now in the name of Jesus Christ. As God arose for the children of Israel when they were crossing the Red Sea, Father God, disgrace the fear of Makodi Abasonda. I will not fear any Pharaoh because I know the Red Sea, the carpet is being rolled out for me right now and I'm going through the Red Sea, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever sea that has tried to overwhelm you, whatever sea that has tried to overwhelm you, whatever sea that has tried to overwhelm you and overshadow you, or or drown you right now my god the lord is saying i'm lifting up a standard against that sea i'm lifting up a standard against anything that has tried to drown you in the mighty name of jesus christ i declare and I decree you will not be disgraced by any egyptian in the mighty name of jesus christ Oh my God, whatever is physically tormenting us, whatever is spiritually tormenting us, right now I declare those things have been disgraced in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every fear that has been standing like a Goliath in your life, right now by the sword of God, the sword of God is cutting off any head of any Goliath in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I cut down every giant, every form of Goliath. He is being cut down to size in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare and I decree, you will not fear, but you will have faith. Whatever is the wickedness that has been happening around you right now, it's been eradicated in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever demonic spirit of fear that has been running rampant all over you, all over around you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, right now, I break it right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I break every evil covenant that has covenanted you with the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Any spirit of fear that has been responsible to bring fear in your life, I command it and I declare it and I say to it, right now you are a liar. Your tomorrow is solid and your tomorrow will come to pass. Your destiny shall be established in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I close the door to that fear that has been saying you will not go through. If you cannot go through the door, you will go through the wall. If you cannot climb over the mountain, my God, my God, that mountain will be flattened for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare and I decree that every wall of Jericho that has been threatening you with fear, that it will not come down. Right now it's being shattered down. Command your way into the city and take your spoils and take what the devil has taken away from you in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not let down. You will not give up. You are charging forward in faith in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is opening doors for you in Jesus' mighty name. You do not have to be fearing. You are protected. You are guaranteed victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for everybody who has woken up this morning. Father, as we go to our respective places in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare and we decree we shall not fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we, we, we say fear must die and fear has died in Jesus' mighty name. We announce, Lord, this morning that the greater one lives inside of us. And the greater one is bigger than any devil, than any enemy of fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is written, the righteous shall be bold as the lion, my God, by our faith in Jesus Christ. Father God, we declare this morning, we are the righteousness of God and we are bold as a lion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, as it is written, the angels shall encamp around us, uh, those who fear him. Lord, we reverence you this morning and we know that the angels have come to encompass around us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The angels of God are with everybody who's at the sound of my voice right now in the name of Jesus Christ. There is no basis for any man, any spirit being any principality to speak against us and to invoke the spirit of fear inside of us. Lord, it has left us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ because the Lord of hosts is with us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we move with the confidence as we step into our day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ as it is written. Lord, we take our confidence in you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is written, O Makodia Masunda, if God before us who can be against us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Fear cannot be against us in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I declare and I decree to everyone on TikTok, on Facebook, on YouTube, anybody who will watch this replay in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is your defense. In whom shall you be afraid? In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, even if a host of demons tries to encamp against, against you in the name of Jesus Christ, your heart will not fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Though war may war against you and rise against you, even in this you shall be confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you is faithful and just to perform it and make sure that you come to the expected end in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I declare and I decree that you shall not be afraid you cannot be threatened in the mighty name of Jesus Christ your persecutors shall stumble and they shall fumble in the name of Jesus Christ father I declare and I decree that there shall be everlasting confusion and disgrace in the camp of the enemy father God I declare and I decree that these ones who are listening to the sound of my voice. They shall not be forgotten in the mighty name of Jesus Christ as you have commanded Lord in your word 365 days Lord that we shall not fear and Lord we move with that matching order and that prophetic word that we shall not fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We walk in the command of fear not in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh yes oh God. I dismiss your life from fear. I dismiss everything concerning you from the life of fear. Refuse to be afraid of anything. My God, not one single strand can be removed without God's knowledge or, or without God's permission on you. Right now, you need to understand that God will not allow you to be harmed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So put your confidence in the Lord. The Lord will take care of you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I bind every spirit of fear. In Jesus' mighty name, I break every evil covenant of fear. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command that every terror of the night that has brought fear in your life, right now it stops in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It shall not move in your environment. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, loose your hold. Fear is loosing its hold from you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you need Jesus. You don't need to fear 
Whatever you need is looking for you. Therefore, you need Jesus. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Your destiny is attached to God. I subject myself to the spirit of faith and not the spirit of fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every disease, every oppression, every depression that came into our lives as a result of fear right now, it catches fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh God. Every stubborn tenant called fear, pack your load. You are evicted in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord has fear. The Lord has the power in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Begin to thank him right now. Begin to thank him right now. Begin to thank him for the word. Begin to thank him for the power he has given you. Begin to thank him right now. Let that depression catch fire, yes, Frida, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has, has, has culminated to that point of depression right now is uprooted in Jesus' mighty name. The Lord will reveal the secrets and expose all the enemies that are masquerading as your friends, that are masquerading as your friends and, and busy instilling your fear inside of you. The Lord will reveal all of that in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, as I close, make it impossible for our enemies to, you, to have a foot in us. Make it impossible, O oh God, for fear to have any root in us. In Jesus' mighty name. Anything that is contrary to the power of faith, Father God, make it impossible to take root in us. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, I give you praise, honor, and adoration. Father, I thank you, Lord, that everything that has come through from my mouth, my God, that Lord, that it will glorify you in Jesus mighty name. Let every single testimony, every praise report that will come from every single person that ran with this word, Father God, let this word take root in somebody, God. Let somebody develop that, 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 th those guts, Father God, to go and fight and win, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, we will not be shaken. We stand on the rock that is solid, that is huge, Christ. In Jesus mighty name. Father, I thank you for these ones that have arisen, oh God. Father, let their expectations not be cut off in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, be inside of them. Be so full inside of them that they have no room for any negativity. They have no room for any fear in Jesus' mighty name. I give you all the glory and adoration, Father God. I am who I am because of you, O oh God. I am because of your calling on my life, O oh God. Father, let everything inside of me at all times, Father God, be all from you, all of you and none of me in Jesus' mighty name. I decree so that you must always increase in everything I do, Father God. In anybody who's going to account, watch this broadcast even later, my God, in the mighty in the name of Jesus Christ, may the same fire of God take root inside of them. May they be so fired up, O oh God, and charge forth in Jesus' mighty name. Charge forth. Let them discover their destiny, and their destiny is a set case in Jesus' mighty name. Favor them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. And the saints of God said, Amen. I want to thank all of you on Facebook and YouTube. God bless you. Remember, you are welcome to watch the Facebook uh, and the YouTube replays at any time. They are on my channel, Fortune L Online, the channel that you are watching me from. And we also did put them up. Those of you who are watching from our partner pages, Apostle Mara's pages, uh, those of you who are on uh, YouTube as well, you are welcome to also follow me on TikTok. Those of you on Facebook, just make sure that you are following me, Fortune L Online. Remember, there's a 10 o'clock session with Apostle Mara where he is teaching the word, hallelujah, every single day of the week, seven days a week, 5 a.m. South African Standard Time, I'm here. Tonight, I am here at 7 p.m. We are here for like an hour or 30 minutes. I will be taking people in the box, so the subject will be uh, pronounced in the uh, um, WhatsApp group. So we will put up a poster on the topic, um, how God wants us to tackle certain things. And you're welcome to come through, ask questions in that time. Okay. So we're going to speak around the issues around, um, choosing, I think, um, it, it, it's going to be around the family aspect in terms of singleness, marriage issues, and all those type of things. Um, what you need to do and all those things that, that is what I'm, I'm hearing in my spirit. So come ready, come prepared, um, there will be uh, other experts that will be on there um, that will join me as well. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, have an awesome day. Remember, you are wonderful. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And God loves you. And go out and spread the love of God and win a soul today. God bless you. Love you, Vimbai. Love you, everybody on uh, Facebook. God bless you. I know I didn't call you by your names today. Hallelujah. I'm trying to stop the stream. I guess it doesn't want me to stop the stream. God bless you, Vimbai, and everybody on Facebook. You guys are amazing.